with it. Um, so that we can see it later on, yeah? This session is being recorded and the link will be on our Facebook if you want to have access to it. If you're here, uh, it's probably because you've been teaching for the last few months or the last few years face-to-face -face in the classroom with the students, and now you're teaching online. And probably this is kind of new to most of us. Some of us have been doing it maybe for a little bit longer. I was doing some teacher training a few, a few weeks ago online already, but this whole thing uh, has come very quickly for most people. Now we're teaching online. And we need to have it clear, we're teaching online. And teaching online is not like teaching face to face. It's different. Some things are the same, but some things are different. And our challenge now is to try to take those things, those dynamics, that methodology that I had in the classroom, take it online. And this is what I'm going to try to do this morning. I'm going to show you some activities that I've been doing online with my students successfully. Uh, when we're teaching online, I think it's really important to have very clear objectives because in my experience is that activities seem to take a little bit longer. Uh, so I have it very clear what the objective of the lesson is in terms of language, vocabulary, skills, and I just am realistic. How much can it get done in an hour when you're teaching online? How much can the students produce? How much can they do? How much can I do? What activities can I do effectively online? I think we need to, we need to be realistic so that we can plan effective lessons. Uh, we're going to start with the first activity. If you have any questions, like I said, I'm not going to stop now to answer questions because I, I would like to finish at half past 11, but I will have a few minutes after that to answer questions. And my email address is there, and I will be happy to do uh, a session with you at some other time if you want to discuss how to do some of the activities. Very simple. What's the word? Can you guess the word? Can you put the letters in order? Whoop. This is something that I do a lot with the students. The title of this session is Engaging Activities. I want the students to be paying attention. So whoop, it goes. What was that? Can, can anybody write the answer in the chat? Do you know the word? I'll give you a clue. Oh, I can see some smiles. Oh yeah, more smiles. Now people say, now I know. Yes, thank you for the clue. So if this is the word, I will ask my student. Let's, let's see on the chat. Yes, very good. What's the first letter? Can you show me the first letter on the screen? Uh, let's see. Can you show me the first letter if it's O or L, very good. I can see some people showing me this letter, W. Which would be the next letter? Very good. Next letter? Some people are not showing me the letter. Yes, T. So anyway, you will continue like this, showing uh, the word letter by letter, and then a little question, do you like watermelon? What I'm finding with online teaching, which is interested, is instead of doing like a grammar activity, a reading activity, speaking activity, I'm doing more like a little bit of grammar and speaking, a little bit of vocabulary and speaking. I'm breaking up the activities more and integrating the four skills together, much more than in the classroom. I don't know if this is, I'm, this is kind of new to me with teenagers or because it's more effective. If you have the question, do you like watermelon? Then you can make it disappear and you can ask the students to ask each other some other questions with the same structure. And you can take the help away. Something that uh, you will see in the session, I do a lot of um, hiding things, giving them things little by little 
this session is engaging activities. I want the students to be paying attention throughout the lesson. So I give them everything, but slowly, they need to guess, they need to participate. Again, similar, but for older students, you can, instead of giving them a picture as a, for support, you can give them some other information, like this is an adjective. Can anybody think of the word? Ah, there's nobody in the chat saying the word. It's an adjective, I'll give you very good. Helen, yes. Oh, Richard, wow, wow, yes, wonderful. You're really good students. So again, you would elicit um, more letters. What's the next letter? Uh, you would give them a little clue. And in this case, a definition. What's the missing word? I'll give you half a second to think about it. Okay. With the students, you can elicit, they can write in the chat, or they can just think, yes, it's accidents, yeah? You explain. To do this, uh, it's much easier to, if you have a slide, you copy the slide and then you change the word. Instead of starting from scratch, you do one slide with all the things coming in and going out, and you just copy the slide so that everything is, the, and the only thing you have to do is to change the letters or the word, but don't start each slide from zero because that's a lot of time. I've, I've done this reading with my teenagers like last week or a few days ago. Uh, and then what I did, I chose some key words and I hid them and they had to guess the hidden words. Again, in a simple way. Can anybody think? Yes, this reading was about a girl that who was studying online. So studying online was like a major um, piece of information. Uh, and then I had another one and again, you know, the students had to guess. And I chose these two, and then we were discussing with the students, a study online. How do you like a study online? Advantages, disadvantages. She's going to go to a circus some, uh, summer camp. How do you feel about it? Would you like to do that? So like I said, uh, I find myself doing more, a little sentence, a little structure, a little bit of a discussion. How do you feel about that? Then we continue. It seems that the students get more engaged uh, rather than spending a lot of time doing grammar or a lot of time doing speaking or, or reading. Following that kind of exercise, again, what? But, you know, it makes a huge difference when you show it and then you move it, take it away. You want the students to pay attention. Whoop, what was that? This is a simple one. Yeah, and again, you could ask the students, to, to give you the, the sentence and then say, what's the first word tonight? What's the next one? And they can, they can give you the, the words one at a time. Yes, what can you do now? You can talk about it. Is it true for you? No, I'm not going to eat pizza tonight. Okay, what are you going to eat tonight? I'm going to eat an omelet or, or whatever. Uh, and then you move, take something away, and they have to make their own sentence. Mm -hmm. And you remove more and more and more. So eventually, after three students, they will have to make the sentence without any help. And then instead of tonight, you can say, okay, now tomorrow, make a sentence with tomorrow. Now you, you don't have to talk about what you're going to eat. You just make a sentence about something that you're going to do tomorrow. So again, with a very simple slide, you can spend a good, you know, a few minutes just practicing. In, in this case, it's going to, it could be any other grammar structure. This is an exercise that I did last week from the book. Uh, it's similar, they had to put the words in order, but I did it online like this. They had to put it, uh, they had to make the question and then they had to ask another a student, but one at a time. And then we would discuss that. And then 
okay, what's the question? And they would write the question in their notebook and then they would ask uh, each other twice or three times, two or three students. And then we would do another question. They would write it down in their notebook and they would be asking each other uh, twice or three times. Mm -hmm. Again, very simple, but just giving them one at a time. Like I said, I like to hide things, uh, words, sentences, questions, and pictures. Uh, again, the title of this session is Engaging Activities, activities that encourage the students to pay attention, to be with you, to be connected. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is it? And now I'm going to ask you to write the answer in the chat. And the first one to answer correctly wins. Okay, what is it? Oh. oh, that doesn't help, does it? What is it? I want that chat steaming. Oh, I can see some people already. Okay, some people seem to, to know. Yes, very good. Excellent. Wonderful. Well done. Yes, it's a scooter. If you do this, what language could you use? Obviously, it could be... It looks like, I think, in my opinion, I agree, I disagree, it looks more like a bike. Obviously, it's really important that when you do this kind of activity, that you give them the language that they want to use, like we do in class. It's not, not everything is fine, no. It's like you need to produce A2 language, or B1 language, or B2 language, or C1 language, yeah? But that's you, you need to tell them. And then again, you discuss it a little bit. If you want to do something like this, like I said before, copy the slide, and then the only thing you have to do is replace the photograph. You don't have to create the slide from the, from the beginning because that would consume a lot of time. Mm -hmm. What's next? Very similar to what we did before. You show them a sentence little by little, and they have to guess the whole point is that they, they make sentences I have never eaten, I have never been to, I have never been to Madrid, I have never been to Morocco, I have never been to Mexico. Yes, very good. Uh, obviously, in this case, we would be practicing present perfect. And then again, is it true for you? And then they would ask each other some questions and they would make their own sentences, replacing Mexico with another country I have never been to. Mm, then they, they could make positive sentences. I have been to whatever. Odd one out. The thing with odd one out, I think, is, is very simple. I think we, we know it. Uh, but my experience is that it's, it's very basic. Sometimes it's like one, two, three, yellow. And it's like, whoa, what's the odd one out? Well, it's very clear. But if you want to recycle vocabulary, make it a little bit more difficult which one is the odd one out and why? Oh, yes, Amanda, Anna, they know. And why is it water? Yes, it's an, again, when you do something like this, it's wonderful when the students come up with different answers. Don't make it obvious so that there's only one answer. If it's only one answer, it's kind of boring. If there are more possibilities and the students explain why, it, it makes it much more interesting. This is good to recycle vocabulary. Talking about vocabulary, use the course book. I use the course book um, when I'm teaching online to save me time to use the resources the students have. And this is very simple. I took the vocabulary list from the back of the book, I make a copy and I hide either some words or some definitions. In this case, I've hidden words. And what's number one? You know that it begins with either A or B. You know that it's a noun. Those clues, the students need to develop those skills and then it's, they read the definition. And what's the answer? Yes, cartoon. What I do with the students, if I, if I show them this, I say, okay, in your notebooks, write numbers one, two, and three. And write the words next to the number. So number one, write the word, number two, and number three. I give them one minute 
where I can, I can drink water and, and relax for a minute, and then we can check one by one. And then, oh, what I can do, if this is their course book, I say, go to your course book and find out because the students don't even know that they have a vocabulary section at the end of the book. So my whole point is I want to use the resources that the students have at home and we use them in class so that they, they use them by themselves. And, and then for homework, my homework would be study the vocabulary for unit nine because it, next week we're gonna be doing a little test to see. Uh, using the vocabulary section and using the grammar section in the book. Yeah. Uh, if we're doing present perfect, you can give them this. They've probably, they've, they've probably studied this at the school. They're, they're, they've seen this before, but we want to practice. And I just give them the grammar from the book. And I say, oh, okay, now you have the questions there. Ask me a question. And I, and I get them to ask me questions probably wrong, wonderful. No, no, look, look, look at this. Now ask me a question. Look at the grammar, ask me a question. Look at the grammar, ask me a question. Yeah, the whole point is I give them the structure from the book and then we put it into practice. They need to work it out. It's not that difficult, but they do make some mistakes. And then when it comes to answering the questions, they say, look at the answers. And then again, they copy the answers. When they answer wrong, I say, okay, look at the answers now. And eventually, you know, they, they, they improve, they pay attention, they work it out and they can ask questions. The same thing with, with past simple or any other structure. Uh, so I use the grammar sections in the book so that they have a good model. And with that model, they use it to make their own questions or sentences. Mm -hmm. You give them this, okay, now we talk about yesterday. Tell me something about yesterday, either positive or negative. Yeah, and, and they, can pay, they can see here, so didn't see, oh, I didn't play, or whatever. And of course, I give them the help if they, ha if they need help, the help is there, yeah. With teaching online, I think part of my job is to be to guide the students even more and to give them the resources they need on the screen and kind of give them the task that they need to do in order to practice the language that we're learning. This is what I'm doing this afternoon. Well, this is what I did on Monday with my junior A2 and I'm going to continue this afternoon at four o'clock. What language do you think we're studying? I said, write a sentence in your notebook with the picture and enjoy. Some of my students, it was really funny, say, I enjoy, and I'm like, no, 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 it's not you, it's the picture. I say, oh, she enjoys playing the guitar. Okay, very good. Some students had it right, some students had a little mistake. I said, okay, correct it. Now, write another sentence with the picture and that language. And they were getting the idea, it's like, oh, okay. Very simple, you're not looking for anything fancy. It's not about me, it's about the picture. Now, write a sentence. What language are we doing? ING and infinitive. I enjoy playing, but I want to play. And then the same thing with uh, he, because by, by the end of this activity, they say, oh, okay, now we know. And say, okay, now write a sentence. And they were much more confident. Yeah, he enjoys drawing. He would like to draw a picture. And now this afternoon, I'm going to continue and I'm gonna have a picture of children so that they use uh, they, and then they're gonna talk about themselves. Today, yes, the students will be talking about, I enjoy doing this. I would like to go out and play I want to do this, yeah? Word search. Uh, I, was, I came up with this activity thinking about, about Easter, but I want to create my own. If you go to the internet and you say, um, make your own word search, I mean, there are ton, tons of websites where you enter the words and, and you have the word search. It's very, very simple. But the key is, how do you do it online? 
well, because I don't want this to take forever. So next week I want to do a quick activity to revise some Easter vocabulary. So I do it like uh, battleships so that then we have a reference. We can say B1 or E4. And of course, you say, okay, can you find any words related to Easter? If they say one at random, I say, okay, where is it? Because they could be saying, what would they say probably? You know, we're all thinking about egg, yes. Okay, but where is it? Are you making it up or did you find it? Oh, Paulina, E4, Bunny, E4, oh, wow. Let's see. E4, yes. Very good. F1, wow, that's great. Excellent. F1 basket, very good. Okay, that's wonderful. You're, you're really good. Uh, with the students, you may want to give them some help. How can you help them? You can give them the first letter. One of the words begins with E. And you tell them what it is. I'm thinking about maybe older kids or kids is like, okay, it begins with E and it's there, A6. And that's the word, and that's the word, okay? So you can, you can give them more or less help as, as needed, yeah? But I like to have the, the, the battleship code because it's fun and, and it's helpful. And you can, you can do it faster because again, you don't want this to take 20 minutes because that wouldn't be a gay engaging probably. What's missing? This is a typical exercise in most course books. Uh, but what I do is I hide some of the words to make it more interesting, to make it more engaging. If, you, if we give them everything, they, they just don't pay attention. They just say, oh, it's there. But if we hide some things, or if we do some, if they have to do something with that, uh, they're more likely to pay attention. So I, I would elicit, okay, what's number one? Yeah, obviously we've been talking about health. What's number three? What do you do when you have, uh, hopefully they will come up with different options, but it's a headache. And then you have six questions here. For me, this is one of the best activities to do online. You have questions and what do you have then? You have answers. But this is what you have in the course book, boring, because you have the questions and you have the answers. So if you give them the questions, and you elicit possible answers, you say, okay, so how do you keep fit? Give me some examples. Oh, I eat vegetables, or I go swimming once a week. The students will come up with their own ideas, which is wonderful. So you go through the questions, you elicit some possible answers, say, okay, what's the answer to number one? You show them the answers, and you, move, you go back. So what was the answer to number one? And the students literally go like this, yeah, because they, they really want to say, oh, okay, okay, what's the answer? Whoop. And when they have the answer, they put their hand, okay, so how do you keep fit? And they say, I go running every day. And it's like, oh, let's find out. Yes, I go running every day. Sounds like the right answer to question one. Okay, question two, why did you go to the doctors? And then they have to find out. The challenge is that with this slide, all the students can remember the six answers. That takes me 10 minutes of very active work in the classroom. Well, not in the classroom, in my living room with the students because they, they have to pay attention, they have to remember, they're making a small mistake, which is fine, they help each other. Yeah, so just play like back and forth. There's a big difference between this and this. Pen and paper, everybody. You need to have pen and paper. I want you to have three pieces of paper and on one piece of paper, write A, B, and C. Are you ready? Three pieces of paper, A, B, C. And I can see you all, remember, I can see Anna and Mark and Lisa, and loads of people here.
Sarah, Patrick, I can see you all. Okay, so what we do now, once you have your three pieces of paper, I'm going to, this is what, what I do the students to get ready for the key exam, you know? Again, the first thing, they need to guess number one, they need to guess number two so that they pay more attention to the activity. Yes, fishing, good. The question, pay attention to the question, why did Alfonso send this message? Why did Alfonso send this message? And now you have to show me your answer. Is it A, B, or C? Let's see. People are thinking, nobody wants to show anything yet. Okay, show me your answer. A, B, or C? Okay, yes, and now people are starting sharing their answers good yes so the answer is c yeah so the idea is that the students play with their cards and once they make their flashcards they keep them because when we have an abc abc activity we tend to use them and the funny thing is if i don't they say hey hey borja a b or c and i'm like okay okay fine you know show me your answer if the answers are like single words again they could write them on a piece of paper so okay write still on one piece of paper write already okay and once you have your three answers have a look and show me your answer which one is it again simple but is more engaging and the students enjoy it Imagination, uh, when I introduce a text, I like to give them a picture, but instead of giving them the whole thing at once, slowly, and there's a lot of guessing. So where am I? Oh, I think you are, you, you could be, it looks like, you know, and eventually, yes, I'm at a concert. And then you do the page in the book, but it's a good idea to show them a picture bit by bit. This is something that I'm doing this week. I, for homework, I ask the students to find their favorite object at home and talk about it. And that's what they did. This is my scooter and it's made of metal. Uh, this is my favorite scooter uh, because is a present. Okay, you get the point, yeah? Uh, so show and tell is good for homework. Teaching is not only online when you're talking to the students, it's also homework. A stand up if, this is great for kids, for teenagers and everybody. A stand up if you're wearing a t-shirt and the students stand up. A stand up if you ate chicken yesterday. A stand up if you've got two sisters or whatever. It could be a stand up or it could be touch your ear if, point to the floor, shake your arm, blink an eye, you know, any action. And then um, once the students do it, if they say stand up if you have two sisters, and then you can ask one of the, the students who's standing up, okay, what are your sister's names or how old are they or whatever. A little bit of humor. This is something that I've been doing with um, my juniors and they enjoy it. I do a joke every lesson at the end of the lesson and they're always asking, Borja, Borja, joke. And it's like, yeah, 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 it's coming up if everything goes according to plan. So why did the student eat his homework? Can you think of the answer? And now my students know it's a piece of cake when something is very easy. Like, yeah, how was the exercise? And they say, oh, a piece of cake. And I'm like, good, it's a piece of cake, yes. Let's see if somebody has the answer. The dog wasn't hungry, very good. I love your imagination. How do they answer? Can anybody suggest an answer? Very good, yes. It's 
Some people are writing. <laughs> Very good, Kelly. Yes. Yeah. And again, simple, simple uh, jokes for for to finish the class or as a summary, loads of uh, things jumbled up, questions, sentences. Um, I hide things, I give them sentences, words, pictures slowly, a little bit at a the, at the time so that they have to guess. Uh, a lot of what was coming up, what's next. Mm -hmm. Things like odd one out, where they can come up with their own answer is more engaging than when it's very clear. Yeah, we give them three past, uh, past forms and one infinitive and it's like, oh, well, there's no debate there. Use the course book, yeah, very useful. Uh, write a sentence, remember the girl playing the guitar? Write a sentence with enjoy. She enjoys playing the guitar. We're looking for a specific language. Vocabulary, if you want Easter activities or something like that, that's an option. When we do the matching, it's much better in my experience to give them the beginning of the sentence, and the endings on different slides so that they have to remember the, either the beginning or the end. Show me your answer, A, B, or C. Mm -hmm. Show and tell, this is great uh, for homework. And today, the, uh, this week for homework, they also have to make a video of their, of their house and their family. And they have to send me the video and we're gonna I'm gonna show them the two minute video uh, about their house and their family, you know, since they're at home all day anyway. And, and obviously they're making the video and they're telling us uh, about their house and their family. And I asked them to add music if they wanted to, to make it fancy, a bit more like a project. Uh, if they just want to send the video, fine. This is important for kids uh, and for everybody just to, to move, you know, halfway through the lesson, it's a good idea to do TPR, total physical response. And a little bit of humor at the end. It's a nice way to end up the class. If you enjoyed this uh, session, uh, we will have hopefully got recorded properly and we'll have the link on St. James's Facebook. And next Wednesday, I'm planning to do a session more for young learners, yeah? Again, half an hour with uh, a wide range of activities for young learners uh, that we can do online easily. It's half past 11, it's a little bit after half past 11, so this is the end of the session. Thank you so much for being here today. If you have any questions, I've got five minutes because we have another session at 12, so we need to finish in five minutes. And like, like I said before, you've got my email address, uh, get in touch with me if you have any questions that I cannot answer now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's see if we have any questions in the chat before we go. Uh, IT skills is, like I said, is not very difficult. You just need to know how to make things appear one at a time or disappear one at a time. I'll be more than happy to do a session on that. I didn't want to do it today to take too much time. Um, I use Google Slides. I think, you know, for me, it works great. But just to give you an idea, if I'm doing something like this, what I do is I copy the slides. I say duplicate slide. So this is another slide. I... Instead of a study online, I want to hide something else. For example, so this is what I want to hide. I hide it and I put this back. And then I've got another, another hidden, uh, I should hide that a little bit better. Yeah, but it's very simple. Yes, copy the slide and replace it. Borja? Yes? Uh, they were asking about what you're using to make your slides. Google Slides. Uh, I go to, G you know, I've got a Gmail account and 
I've been using PowerPoint for years and I, you know, PowerPoint is fine. I like uh, Google Slides better. It's, it's, it's more simple uh, and I can have access wherever I am. Uh, as you can see, I've got loads of presentations. Uh, you open, you have a basic slide. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's simple. It's not very complicated. Once you, you, if you watch a tutorial, you, you will see that once you know how to design one slide, you can design anything. And probably this is what you need to know, how to make things appear and disappear. You have this, you right click and you go to animate. And then you can either, it can fade in, so it flies in or fade out it disappears. Yeah, so if it's like this, then when you click, it disappears. Or has somebody asked about breakout rooms? Breakout rooms, yes. Uh, thank you for asking that. Uh, I'm going to use those uh, this afternoon with my uh, students. I, I'm not gonna do it now. If you want, we can do it next week. But basically, is you, you send students to to their own classroom in their own group. Uh, but like I said, uh, I don't have time to do it now. Uh, maybe next week we can have a session. Again, breakout rooms, I think is, is good, but because I've been practicing things for this session, uh, I haven't been doing breakout rooms. I'm gonna do it this afternoon. It's not that difficult, but you, you can watch a tutorial on the internet or if we have time, we can look at that next week. Um, and somebody also asked about um, how they get their videos to you. Well, they either, it depends. I'm giving them flexibility. I don't want to, you know, to stress anybody out. And some people are sending their videos as attachment. Some students uh, are sending me links uh, and they have it saved wherever they have it saved. So I'm just trying to get videos uh, they're also sending me photos, uh, which is something that uh, I think is very useful. Let me see. Uh, yeah, While you're I, looking for that, I'll just clarify the fact somebody was asking if the link is going to be the same for the Young Learner session. No, uh, you'll have to look on Facebook uh, and click on the link for the Young Learner session. It'll be a different link, okay? Yeah. And again, with videos and photos, fo uh, photos are easy to find. The students are sending me photos with the parents' permission always, yeah? And we've been using photos to talk about present continuous, past continuous. This, this was my photo on Monday. What were you doing at six o'clock? Oh, uh, Eric was doing his homework at six o'clock on Monday. So the more interaction we have, the better. And the videos is little projects. Uh, how are they going to send them to me? Like I said, some of them are sending me links or, or the video itself as an attachment. More things? Okay, you've got my email address. Uh, send me any questions. I enjoyed doing this session. Next Wednesday, at the same time, I will be talking more about kids. So if you want to uh, be here next week with us, uh, I'd love to see you then. Have a good rest of the week and I hope next week you can have a little rest. Bye-bye.